Hello, my friends, and welcome back once again to the Cottage Kitchen at the Elliott Homestead. This week, I want to invite you along for five very ordinary farm breakfasts. If you're new around here, you should know that we've been cooking from scratch for over a decade, learning how to make things that we love to eat, and a lot of that which we can grow on our farm. This time of year, the seasons have shifted a little bit and there's a lot less coming out of the gardens and a lot more coming out of the pantries. I'd like to thank Birch Mattress for sponsoring today's cooking inspired video. Birch makes mattresses that are crafted with organic and natural material that have been sustainably sourced. I've been enjoying sleeping on a birch mattress for months now, and I love that it's free from polyurethane foams and fiberglass materials that can be harmful to health. Birch makes organic mattresses that are assembled in America with organic latex, New Zealand wool, American steel springs, and organic cotton. They offer a 100-night sleep trial so that you can make sure you love your new mattress, and they offer a 25-year warranty, flexible payment plans, financing options, and free shipping. Birch's mattresses are made with natural materials to keep you cool, and they have a plush cotton cover. They also offer in-home setup and removal. You can get 20% off your Birch mattress and two free EcoRest pillows by visiting birchliving.com forward slash Elliot Homestead. Even though the produce from the gardens is now limited for the seasons ahead, that doesn't stop us from enjoying some very simple breakfast. Now, when I told my friend the other day that I actually get up and cook breakfast for my family every morning, she was pretty astounded. In this sort of day and age of super fast breakfast and everybody eating on the go and just pouring themselves a bowl of cereal, this might look a little fussy, a little bit over the top. But it's a part of our culture here in our family, and I think it's really important because breakfast doesn't have to be that complicated. My goal is always to provide something nourishing for the family, something that blesses them and sort of sets the tone for the day. That doesn't mean I always get it right, but it does mean that there's always something on the table that we can enjoy together. This morning, it just so happens to be some einkorn buttermilk pancakes and stewed apples from our tree. And then the next day, we start all over again. That's the thing about breakfast. It happens every single day. Now, I don't have a ton of recipes that I rotate through. I've got some tried and true ones that come out during the weekday. Saturdays and Sundays usually are a little bit more festive because we have a little bit more time. But because we're a homesteading and homeschooling family, it means that we have to be realistic about what's possible in the morning. So often it's about 20 minutes of prep and about 20 minutes of eating, and that's enough to get us off on the right foot. Breakfast number two this week is what I call a cold breakfast, meaning I hard boil eggs for some protein, we put out cheeses and meats and whatever else we have on hand. Sometimes it's leftover bits of bread, sometimes it's fruit, sometimes it's just veg, something really simple. And then we do it again. This morning, it just so happened to get really cold, so I wanted to make something a bit warm for the breakfast table. I can throw down a frittata in almost no time. I preheat my oven and literally saute whatever odds and ends that I have floating around the kitchen in some butter, add in some eggs, and call it good. This is one breakfast that I make over and over and over again, but luckily to keep it spicy, I don't really ever make the same frittata twice because it really is whatever we have on hand. Maybe it's leftover bacon, maybe it's some cooked potatoes from the night before, maybe it's bits of ham, or maybe it's just veg. I 
think one of the most important things to remember with from scratch food is that it doesn't have to be perfect. We sort of have these Pinteresty ideas in our minds about what it needs to look like. And really that's not my goal at all. My goal is to simply put something on the table that nourishes my family and sort of creates this culinary habit that we're trying to establish and, you know, kind of creates sturdy eaters ultimately, because they're going to eat what I put on the table, not necessarily what they feel like. And I think that's been helpful for them and just saying, here's what we got as a family. You're welcome to join in. And here we go again. I often make homemade ciabattas for my children's sandwiches for homeschool co-op. So two days a week, they need to take lunches to go. And these ciabattas make up really beautiful sandwiches. I'll put a link to the video where I show you how to make these below this one, but they also toast up really beautifully for breakfast breads. So once again, we go back to eggs as our protein and homemade bread. It's pretty simple and really delicious. We're still eating on sweet potatoes from the garden. We had a little bit of extra time to saute those in some tallow in the oven and mix up some beautiful scrambled eggs to go with them. Breakfast is usually very casually eaten at our little dining table in the kitchen where we're all kind of around, but people sort of come and go. Somebody's in the shower, somebody's packing up a school bag, maybe somebody's already started on a math lesson, but eventually everybody filters in and gets their fill. I hold on to the hope that even though not all the food I cook are my children's favorites, that they will look back on these mornings that we spent together as a family, even if it's rushed getting out of the house, or even if people are just passing by before they get started on their day, I hope they look back on this time with fondness. Mm -hmm. 